Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Donna Villa coming to you from Chicago, USA. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. The U.S. Supreme Court repeal of Roe v. Wade has been welcomed by the Pontifical Academy for Life. Archbishop Vincenzo Paglia, the president of the Vatican-based academy, has stated that the verdict is a powerful invitation to reflect together on the serious and urgent issue of human generativity and the conditions that make it possible. Similarly, pro-life organizations in the U.S. have also lauded the repealing of the Roe v. Wade on June 24th, almost five decades after it was passed. According to Marjorie Dannenfelser, president of the Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life America, the SCOTUS ruling is a historic human rights victory for unborn children and their mothers and a bright pro-life future. In a similar vein, Archbishop Jose Gomez, who heads the U.S. Catholic Episcopate, and Archbishop William Lorry of Baltimore, the chairman of the USCCB Committee on Pro-Life Activities, hailed the ruling soon after it was announced. In a statement, the prelate said that it was a historic day in the life of the nation. At the conclusion of the 10th World Meeting of Families, Pope Francis gave a mandate to Catholic families. His Holiness exhorted them to proclaim the beauty of being families with joy and the grace of Christian marriage to children and young people, he said. The meeting concluded on Saturday night with a celebration of the Holy Mass at St. Peter's Square. Copies of the papal mandate were distributed to all the pilgrims and participants who had gathered at the square on Sunday, June 26, for the customary Angelus. The Pope invited young families to be guided by those who know the way and urged families to be companions on the journey for others. He exhorted them not to be overcome by sadness, but to trust in the love that God has placed in them. Meanwhile, Cardinal Kevin Farrell, the prefect of the Dicastery for Laity, Family, and Life, announced on Saturday that there will be a jubilee of families with the Holy Father in 2025, and the next World Meeting of Families will be held in 2028. The church in the Philippines has been given a rare honor as one of its shrines has received international status. The Antipolo Cathedral, which is known as the National Shrine of Our Lady of Peace and Good Voyage, has been designated by the Vatican as an international shrine. The announcement was made by the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines on Sunday, June 26th. This is the nation's first international shrine, the third in Asia, and the 11th globally. Bishop Francisco de Leon of Antipolo confirmed the Vatican declaration of granting the shrine that privilege. It is also the first Marian international shrine in Asia and the sixth in the world. Other shrines include the sanctuaries of Lourdes and Fatima and the basilicas in Assisi and Lisieux. While diocesan shrines are approved by the bishop, national shrines are designated by the bishop's conference and international shrines are endorsed by the Holy See. On Sunday, June 26th, the Spanish capital Madrid witnessed thousands of people taking to the streets to protest the repressive pro-abortion and euthanasia laws. Boldly proclaiming the sanctity of life right from conception, the march was held with the motto, quote, We risk our lives, enough of laws against truth and human nature, end quote. Protesters marched from the Glorieta de Bilbao to the Plaza de Colón, denouncing the laws allowing abortion and assisted dying. Jaime Mayor Oreja, a member of the NEOS, one of the organizers of the march, said that the debate for life is open and life will always win. According to 40 Days for Life National Coordinator Nayeli Rodriguez, more than 2.5 million babies have been killed in Spain ever since abortion was legalized in 1980s. She said that the pro-life movement is stronger than ever, adding that they are determined to conduct prayer vigils outside abortion facilities.
A bishop in northern Nigeria has urged Catholic believers to play an active role in politics to create a better society as the nation plunges in chaos. Bishop Matthew Hassan Kuka of Sokoto Diocese in the North said that active involvement of Christians and Catholics would change the ugly face of Nigerian politics, which is marked by corruption, killings, and other vices. Bishop Kuka spoke at the 70th anniversary lecture of the Order of the Knights of St. Molumba at St. Leo Catholic Church in Lagos. The bishop said the passivity of Christians has caused people with no credibility and integrity dominating the political sphere. Bishop Kuka added that the church can lead the nation in credible ways as it believes in the fear of the Lord and selfless service. Still in Nigeria, two priests were killed in separate incidents in Kaduna and Edo states. Father Vitus Borogo, serving in the Kaduna Archdiocese, was murdered by armed men on June 25th at a prison farm following a raid. The diocese confirmed the death of the priest. He served as the chaplain of the Catholic community of Kaduna State Polytechnic and chairman of the Nigerian Catholic Diocesan Priest Association's Kaduna chapter. Alongside the Auchi Diocese has confirmed the death of Father Christopher Odia of Edo State, who was abducted by militants on Sunday morning, June 26th. Militants stormed the rectory of St. Michael Catholic Church in Ozairu and abducted the priest as he was preparing for Mass. Hours later, he was killed. Father Odia was the administrator of St. Michael's Church and the principal of St. Catholic Secondary School in Jatu. Meanwhile, two priests of the Sokoto Diocese abducted last month has been set free. The diocese confirmed that Father Stephen Ojapa and Father Oliver Okpara, who were kidnapped from their rectory at St. Patrick's Parish by armed men, were set free on June 26th. Saturday, June 25th, was a day of rejoicing for the Chaldean Church in Iraq as a new church was blessed in the city of Erbil. His Beatitude, Cardinal Louis Rafael Sacco, consecrated the new St. Thomas Church in the Christian district of Ankawa in the presence of Archbishop Bashar Mati Warda of Erbil, priests, deacons, nuns, and a large number of believers. The ceremony was also attended by Auxiliary Bishop of Alkosh, Mar Paul Habib, Archbishop Mar Nicodemus Mati Sharaf, the Syrian Orthodox Metropolitan of Mosul, and Bishop Mar Shimon Daniel of the Ancient Church of the East. The Patriarch thanked Archbishop Bashar for building three churches in the region during these years. He also expressed gratitude to the Kurdistan authorities for supporting Christians. Cardinal Sacco said that the opening of the church is an invitation to all to persevere in the faith. The Chaldean Church is one of the 23 autonomous Oriental churches in full communion with Rome. Pro-life supporters have decried the record number of abortions in England and Wales in 2021. According to a new statistics released by the government on June 21st, 214,869 abortions were performed last year in England and Wales. It is the highest since the Abortion Act was introduced in 1967. It was 4,000 more than the number of abortions performed in 2020. As many as 3,370 babies with disabilities were killed in the womb along with 859 others with Down syndrome in 2021. The Most Reverend Bishop John Sherrington, lead bishop for life issues, decried the appalling figures. He said, quote, the trends point to a lack of support for pregnant women, though we thank those charities and groups which provide excellent care, end quote. The prelate reiterated the church's teachings on life and urged the faithful to celebrate life as a gift. He also called for legal protection and support for the unborn and pregnant mothers. 
After the overturning of Roe v. Wade here in the U.S., pro-choice outfits are seeking ways to prevent abortion bans from coming into place. The Utah branch of Planned Parenthood filed a lawsuit on Saturday, June 25th, seeking to block the state's abortion ban, which came into effect on Friday. Utah was one of the eight states that enacted its trigger laws banning abortion soon after the Supreme Court ruling was announced on Friday, June 24th. Similarly, the American Civil Liberties Union of Arizona and the Center for Reproductive Rights filed an emergency motion on Saturday as part of an initiative to block the state's, quote, personhood law, end quote, passed last year. They argued that it could be used to prohibit all abortions in the state. Arizona already has a 100-year law banning all abortions and another one signed earlier this year prohibiting the termination of pregnancy after 15 weeks of gestation. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.